We pride ourselves as a democracy, and truly we have chalked a lot of gains in that regard. In a democratic society, the expectation is that the welfare of the poor and underprivileged, mostly, will be improved. This is why people take the time to exercise their civic duties to join long winding queues hoping to elect people who would make good on their campaign promises to solve the myriad of problems we face. So the question is, of what use is a democracy if citizens' lives are not improved? For democracy to succeed, the people must feel that their lives are being improved. And don't get me wrong, in several instances, government interventions are seeking to make lives better. And no one government is expected to solve the problems of a country in one fell swoop, or in our case, two presidential terms. I'm not even referring to the top of the totem pole. I'm talking about the governance at the local level. Power decentralized to the roots where the people are and need to feel the impact of democracy. Tonight, I'll focus on one community where residents feel that democracy has let them down. I'm talking about the people of Oyarifa Green Hills, here in the Greater Accra region. For years, Oyarifa Green Hills, just like many other communities in Accra, has had no drainage system. When it rains, they are unable to go out of their houses. And to compound the problem, people have built on waterways and authorities have looked on. Over the past few weeks, heavy rains have flooded the homes of residents and trapped most of them in their own homes for days. And understandably so, they feel helpless. Due to this, my sister cannot come back from work. Oh yeah, she went to work for almost three days now. She has not been in the house. And I'm, I'm the only one in the house for now. Meanwhile, I'm here with my father, my siblings and other people. Well, the Member of Parliament for the area, Francis Xavier Sosu, also felt helpless about the situation. He's a lawmaker, after all, and not a developmental agent. But as we have come to know in Ghana, that doesn't hold. An MP is equal to a developmental agent. So he wants to force the hand of the local authorities to act. This is how he plans to do so. We are calling on all of them to come out so that we can use that last tool, which is a tool in a democracy, to freely express our anger to the state and to the government and to the people. So he plans to hit the streets with the residents. Well, you cannot fault him. Many people have come to the realization that that is one of the effective ways of getting authorities to listen and most importantly, act. While well, the municipal chief executive for the area, uh, Jennifer Didi Ejabeng, wasn't too happy with the MP's intended action her immediate reaction was to promise to ensure the water would be pumped out of the many flooded homes. We have other places where during this flooding, we, we would just use water pumps to pump out the water from their homes as an immediate solution for, for them, which currently is ongoing. Some residents have called on the assembly. But she forgot, there are no drains to carry the water. So the NADMO officials were also caught in a helpless situation. It's packed there. We cannot pump the water because there are no drains to pump the water through. You can see the houses built on the waterways. Now we've checked at the houses. None of the houses here have drainage systems. So it's apparent residents there would not have any other choice but to turn the pools in their houses into fish ponds. It truly is a helpless situation. So tell me, how democracy has made the lives of these people better. And question, do you think the people of Oyarifa would find themselves in that fix if an influential government figure lived in their community? It must not be the case that the proverbial big man or government figure must live in our communities to influence change when governance is expected to reflect at the local level and impact positively on the lives of those at the bottom of the totem pole. We've heard the governing MPP say that it is working hard to break the eight. Well, here's some free advice to them. One way of breaking the eight is by solving problems like this, by being very responsive to the needs of the people. That is when you can truly say the society is so democratic because the ordinary needs of the people are being catered for.